Ezekiel chapter number 4. Thou also, son of man, take thee a tile. Maybe like, you know, it's a tile that you see today, like a little floor tile. And lay it before thee, and portray upon it the city, even Jerusalem. Take this tile, and draw a picture of the city of Jerusalem upon it. He lay siege against it, and build a fort against it, and cast a mountain against it, set the camp also against it, and set the battery rams also I mean, set the battery rams against it round about. So he does, he makes his little tile, he draws the city of Jerusalem on it, and he gets his little army man, and they surround this tile, because remember, the city has not been besieged, it has not been totally destroyed yet. Ezekiel has he been taken captive from the first, second, at least not the third. The third is when the city is completely destroyed. So he's telling the people in Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar is not done. The city, where our God's name is to be, will be destroyed. Watch me play with the army men. And he's showing a perfect illustration here, and it's proper. More will take thou unto thee an iron pan, cast iron pan, you've seen them. Set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city. So it looks like he takes his cast iron pan and he just puts it right over the tile. No rain. No help from heaven. Between thee and the city, and set thy face against it, and it shall be besieged, and thou shalt lay siege against it, and thou shalt be assigned to the house of Israel. So a cast iron pan speaks of judgment. Iron is not good in the Bible when you study iron. Now this chapter we're going to look at what this this city upon the the, the tile, what Jerusalem's going to face that we've already read in Jeremiah and Lamentations. Remember again, in Ezekiel's time here, it has not been destroyed. And uh, lay thou also upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of days that thou shalt lay upon it, Thou shalt bear their iniquity. And again, he's going to have another illustration. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of days, three hundred and ninety days, so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. So Ezekiel is going to be assigned to these people. And right now we're looking at three hundred and ninety days. And when thou hast accomplish them, lay, uh, lie again on thy right side. And thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days, as I appointed thee each day for a year. Now the sign of Ezekiel is a four hundred and thirty years total. But God says a day for a year. He lays three hundred and ninety days on his left side. He lays forty days on his right side. I can't even lay on my right side 40 minutes without turning and tossing. And laying on your side shows iniquity. More for Israel than there is for Judah. Now that 40, I'm thinking I didn't study maybe 30 years has already come to pass but I don't think so 40 years 40 days 40 is a number of testing in the Bible therefore thou shalt set thy face toward the seed of Ju the seeds of Jerusalem and thy arm shall be uncovered and thou shalt prophesy against it and you can see this guy he's got this little tile he's got a cast iron uh, pan over this tile drawn with a city He's laying on his left side. He's laying on his right side. Now he's got his arm uncovered, no sleeve. And behold, I will lay bands upon thee. 
to tie them up. He's going to put them in bondage. And thou shalt not turn from thee one side to another. So Ezekiel is going to be barred and banned and put to the stocks so he does not roll over. His sleep is going to be in bondage for 430 days. Till thou hast ended the days of thy siege. I mean, maybe we get the thing is that Ezekiel kind of slept rolling around the bed. If he's got to be bound, this is not something Ezekiel would do normally if he would be put into bands. He had to be forced to lie 390 days on his left side and then lay 40 days on his right side. It's not easy for him. Thou. Take thou also unto thee wheat, and barley, and beans, and lentils, the kind of beans, and millet, and fitches, and put them in one vessel, and make thee bread thereof. So he's got like a kind of little smorgasbord of a bread dough. According to the number of days that thou shalt lie upon thy side, 390 days thou shalt... Uh, 390 days shalt thou eat thereof. Okay. Now is he going to lay on his side and be tied laying to his side. Now God is going to give him a restriction of meal. And thy meat which thou shalt eat shall be by weight. 20 shekels a day from time to time thou shalt eat it. And I got a uh, note here. Ten ounces of this bread. And it's going to be a set time throughout that day you're going to eat. And only ten ounces and nothing more. That's not a lot. But this is going to be his daily meal while he's lacking sleep. Being forced to sleep a pacific way. And thou shalt drink also water by measure. A sixth part of a hen from time to time shalt thou drink. That's six ounces. And let me see. Six ounces. Oh. The soda can that I'm holding in my hand is 12 ounces. So if you were to get one of those little mini soda cans they have... That little mini half soda can, water would be Ezekiel's drink for the entire day. Not a water bottle that you can buy. A Dixie cup, would you think? If not, one of those little styrofoam cups. Thou shalt drink also water by measure. The sixth part of a hen, from time to time thou shalt drink. Who was living like this while while Ezekiel's writing? Jeremiah. Didn't he eat until the bread was gone out of the Baker Street? Ezekiel is living what Jeremiah is doing. He's in prison in his house. Tied to a bed. Now correct me, and I, I may be wrong about this, but wasn't Jeremiah Bound it up, I think. I, 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 you got to go back and check that. I could be wrong. But these people here, and he's talking about, he's not talking about Jeremiah. He's talking about the Jews. They're going to live uncomfortable nights. They're not going to have enough food until the city is completely destroyed. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. Well, I read something about cakes in Jeremiah. And barley is not really the, I'm told, I never had it, but it's not really, I guess, that tasty. I don't know. And thou shalt bake it with dung that cometh out of man in their sight. So he's going to take human manure as a fuel for fire, told by God. So when you go to certain grocery stores, you can find a cereal of Ezekiel 4 9. And I just forgot what the name of it was. 
Actually, no, I think it's actually called Ezekiel 4 9. And according to what God says, I, the people in Jerusalem are going to use human manure as a as a fuel. Now he's going to cut Ezekiel a break, but it doesn't say he cuts the people in Jerusalem a break. So I wonder when they make that cereal, what they use to make it for the flames thereof. Probably natural gas, if you want to catch the pun. But propane that smells like, never mind. So God says, I want you to take your dung and I want you to cook your bread with it. And the Lord said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread, using the dung, among the Gentiles, whether I have driven them, Babylon, while Babylon's in the city. It's double unclean bread. <laughs> then said, I, oh Lord God, behold, my soul has not been polluted. For from my youth up, even till now, have I not eaten of that which is de which dieth itself, which is the law, or torn in pieces, which is the law. Neither came there abomination, abominable flesh to my mouth. True. I got Acts 10, verse 14 as a note here. Saying, God, listen, I've, I've done the dietary laws. What you're telling me to do is against the law <laughs> so you know what the people of Israel are going to be doing they're going to break the law by their diet to survive yay all that a man has he'll give for his life even if it comes out of his rear end and Jesus spoke about what comes out of the rear end as the word draft in some illustrations then he God said unto me lo I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith now thou shalt bake it with the dung that cometh out of the man in their sight I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung thou shalt prepare the bread therein either the dung is used for the fire or it's actually put into the bread Put that into a cereal box. Therewith. Compare the bread therewith. It doesn't say anything about baking it. If you got a bunch of greens on the counter, you're going to make a cake or, you know, you got eggs, oil, water, the cake mix. Up here it says, thou shalt bake it with dough. Yeah, bake it with dung. When you read the back of a cake mix box, it says you take the eggs, the water, and that, and mix it together and bake it. It doesn't say anything about, you know, the oven. I mean, it, you can read it both ways. It's just, it's disgusting. I mean, if, if you want, I mean, that, if, if it is in the cake, what an additive. If it's as a fuel to make the cake, what a smell. And he gets cow's dung. And if you ever smelt and dealt with cow manure, by the way, cow dung and manure has great uh, gases in it. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, Behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem. Famine and drought. And guess what we're reading? We're reading the final days of Jeremiah in the land before Babylon comes. While he's in jail. And they shall eat bread by weight. And with care. Not only do you weigh it out, but you, even what you weighed to you, you, you nibble. And they shall drink water by measure, and with astonishment. This is all I get. 
Lamentation says we're, we're buying our water. What would you think if America had to live by that? If all of a sudden tomorrow morning in America, you go to the grocery store and they give you one box of a frozen food meal. Well, that's it? Yeah. And by the way, make that thing last all week. Well, give me a bottle of water. You get a little Dixie cup or a little styrofoam cup and say, you get some more tomorrow. Let me ask you, what has Ezekiel done that's wrong? Let me ask you. Some of the things that you're suffering, what wrong have you done? In reality. Now, I don't know who you are. I don't know what your problems are. But one of the sufferings you may be going through, like Ezekiel, is you may be an illustration to somebody else. You know, the hardest thing is the people in Jeremiah and the people in Ezekiel do not get right. That's the, that's the part I don't like. Yeah, I don't like things about God. I don't like being an example to others, especially if they don't listen. How would you like to go through any kind of... Uh, listen, I'm not talking about pain as in aspirin or medicine. I'm talking about any pain in your life to show, that, hey, for that person over there, that person doesn't get it. Ezekiel's going to lose his wife. You know how much he loved his wife and said, uh, I forget what it is when we get there, but something of his heart, I forget what it was. The joy, something like, whatever, it's a good, it's a good blessing, words that is used for Ezekiel's wife. And then God takes her. For what? For what reason? So he could be an example to the people. And Ezekiel, I don't want you to die. Ezekiel, I want you to lay on your left side. I'm going to tie you to... Listen, man, if you tie me to the bed and try to get me to lay on one side, particularly if you get me to lay on my left side, I'm going to be in pain. And it shows that maybe people are even peeking in Ezekiel's... Oh, well, yeah, he's still laying on that side. Weren't they peeking in on Daniel? And then I want you to, all right, let's see, wheat. Okay, I, I, I like wheat bread. I rather have regular bread. And there's one particular wheat that's got kind of stuff on it. I, I don't know what kind of it is, but it, it tastes good. I like that. Barley. I'm really not, I don't know about anything about barley. Beans, okay, I like beans. Lentils, no. A couple of them I do, but millet, I don't know. When I say that, it comes fish. I may get wrong. Fitches, that's a kind of plant that does, I mean, does, and put them in one vessel. I'd rather have chicken. I'm not a Jew, I'd rather have pork. I like to have some meat. I enjoy it. Listen, if I could have this like in a beef broth, okay. You're going to grind it all up, you're going to do whatever you're going to do it, you're going to bake it. That's something to do with dung, okay, something. We can agree on that. And you're going to get 10 ounces of that every day. And that's it. And then 6 ounces of water. Man, I can guzzle 12 ounces, 12 and a half ounces of soda in one pop. And enjoy the burp to follow. For how long? 430 days. That's over a month, my rough estimation. 12, 10, 12, uh, you can figure out. 430 divided by 12, and you get the answer there. That's a long time. And Ezekiel didn't do anything wrong. Besides, I mean, we're all sinners, but what did he do wrong? He was called. You know why people don't want to follow God? Oh, what's the will of God? I want you to lay on your side for 430 days. I want you to eat a ration of food. And this may be a missionary today. 
It may be a custom where he goes and he has to lay on the ground. He may have to go over there and not have steaks anymore and eat something that he doesn't like in order to be a witness to them natives or whatever he is. But remember, remember what we read in Ezekiel so far? You know, you're not going to a strange people with a strange language, chapter 3. He's not on the mission field, but guess what? He is on the mission field. He's in a foreign country with his own people. That they may want bread and water. Okay, so I'm going to get 10 ounces of food. I'm going to get 6 ounces of water, but I'm still going to want. And be astonished like a stone. Astonied one with another. Until you got, until I got, you complained to me about. The only thing we ever get. Bread, 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 bread. And co consume away for their iniquities. And where do you find that? You find that in Lamentations. You found that in Jeremiah, where he's writing to us in, in Jeremiah and in Lamentations. The little kids are walking in the streets, dropping and dying. They're crying to their mothers who are who are dry. Can I say that? Mothers can't provide the nourishment to their child because they become dry. They can't. They cry out, "Mommy, give me food." There is no food. America's got too much food. And she's not thanking God for the food. And she's wasting the food she's got. How many dumpsters are filled with good food from outside of restaurants? And then they cry poverty and fill, feed the children. You know? Oh, I want to be called the Lord. like Something like Ezekiel. No, I want the good thing. We haven't studied the prophets. Ezekiel, he, he's a wonderful guy. He and he obeys God and does. And we're not finished yet. We're, we're closing off of the chapter, but it goes on. Ezekiel, as the illustration of the nation of Israel, just goes on. But you know what revelation Ezekiel gets in the end? He gets the revelation of the holy temple that will be in. Jerusalem with the Lord Jesus Christ there ministering. How's that? Yea, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Amen. Glory to God. But wait till we get to New Jerusalem. Wait till we get what's prepared by God. And we have some of the blueprints, but we haven't seen it all. Even Paul writes this. We can't even fathom what heaven is going to get. Jesus told Nicodemus, you can't even believe the earthly things, never mind the heavenly. 